<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Valerie Bellin. Uh, Valerie and I had a little negotiation before this uh, discussion today about what language we would conduct it in. And we decided in the spirit of Brexit, I would ask my questions in English and she would reply in French. I'm sorry, it's a, it's a sad metaphor for our times. Uh, but just to begin with, Valerie, um, I'm really interested to hear from you what your reaction was initially when you heard that you'd been nominated for a prize on the theme of disorder? Um, well, I wasn't very really surprised, but actually rather worried. I think that uh, this disorder, I, I've never spelt it out as such, but uh, from the very beginning it has been present in my work uh, through notions of profusion, and the denatured aspect of what I photograph. So when we look at a photograph such as the one on the screen now, which you took in Venice, I think, in 1997, uh, we can see that current through your work even then. But I'm curious if you could please tell us a little bit about why you selected these particular objects to photograph in this view. I've always been attracted by objects that we could qualify as quick kitsch. And here, particularly in Venice, these objects are dedicated to tourism, to consumerism, consumption which is a bit like mass consumption linked to tourism. So all of these objects are a simulacres of a real world to some extent, because here you can see uh, Saturn, we saw a uh, crystal electric guitar, and the paradox of all of this is that they're objects that have lost their value as uh, in terms of use, but they just have a decorative value now. It is a, a world that's biting its tail to some extent. And uh, I think that it's a series that dates back to 93, no, sorry, 97, and uh, we find this thing in the, in, in the ser still life series. When we think about this topic, disorder, I think it's very tempting to immediately go to physical disorder and this notion of entropy that we can capture and, and see in some of your photographs. But there's another element to disorder that emerges in your work, I think, and that is the question of psychological state. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the bodybuilders in that context. Alors, les bodybuilders, en fait, uh, the bodybuilders, actually, in the unrolling of my work, it's a series that allowed me to move from the world of objects to the world of living beings. And as you can see here, we can see that these people are somewhere between the object and the human being because they are metallic beings to some extent. And disorder here, is of a, a personal disorder because it's sort of a disorder of oneself, of the being. Because these people are transforming themselves into objects, consumer objects. So it's an inner disorder. It is a plastic transformation, as if the human being under this human flesh would turn into plastic. So this disorder is real, but it's also a certain fragility of mankind that I show here. Now, I have seen some accounts in the press that described your prize-winning entry um, as somehow a very environmentally concerned project. And I'm, I know that is an element of what you work on. But when we think about a body of work like the chips, uh, as shown on the screen here, there's another element, I think, that comes through, and that is this element not just of marketing, but of illusionism. Absolutely. Actually, when we look at these photographs, I am truly, for the very first time, in a supermarket. And so this idea of vernacular objects, of mass consumption, is apparent in the place where I am. But there is also a very strong phenomenon in this uh, series. It's the disappearance of the object, because actually we're not, we don't buy anything. We're buying a picture. So that food is turned into packaging. And uh, what we're buying is an image. 
So the thing itself disappears to the benefit of its representation, uh, to the benefit of image. And this sort of dictatorship of images is throughout all of my work. And also that the photograph is a representation of the bag. So you've got these nested referenced, don't you? Yes, what happens is that when we look at the photo, we're not sure what we're looking at. It's no longer either a packet of chip, of crisps, or food, or a photograph. Because I took these photographs with a 2025 uh, uh, chamber, and we can see on the print itself, you can see uh, the uh, frame of the print itself on the aluminium packaging. So, so we say, well, what are we looking at? Am I looking at a poster? Am I looking at a seriography? In any case, we're not looking at food. We're looking at an image. This is something I think about from time to time with your work, Valerie, and I mean it in the, the highest complimentary way. But I wonder if you could talk a little bit about your role and identity as a woman in making this work. And is there something that's uh, particularly feminist about your perspective on the things you photograph? I, I, I am not a militant, as you can see, but I think that any artist, it's sort of an engagement to be an artist. You are renouncing certain things to engage in something else. And the fact that I am a woman, of course, of course is present in my work. But I think that this is mainly um, translated in the fact that I photograph, I often photograph stereotypes. And I try to deconstruct these stereotypes. I think that that is where the engagement lies. It's a, a sort of resistance. How to make uh, the false sensitive in order to explore the truth of oneself, a form of truth which is that of the living. That's where uh, my engagement is. I think it's at once feminine and masculine. And when I photograph men or women, I photograph them in a perfectly equivalent manner. And with the next slide, I want to just return you to this question of disorder again. And I think it's really intriguing that you did this series of palettes a few years ago, which really play around with this notion of order and disorder and the way in which somehow order becomes disorder, disorder becomes order again. Can you tell us a little bit about this particular project? Yes, the order comes from the classification according to type of, a, of, a, of an object. I'm in a recycling factory and I'm photographing these homogenous objects placed on pallets. And for the first time, I want to directly show in an almost documentary manner the pr programmed obsolescence. Because these objects are almost new, uh, they've just been unwrapped from their new wrapping, they've been put on a pallet to be sent off to be destroyed. And this really shows that we don't know what to do with the profusion of objects in shops, of the profusion of this production of objects related to linked to the logistics of mass consumerism. And the only defense that we have is ridiculous because it's that of the classification according to type. But it is, uh, so they're also vanities to a certain extent. I think this next slide also deals with that question of classification. I wonder when we look at these, these collectors and the environments that they've created around themselves, do you see them as somehow struggling against disorder, trying to create an order for themselves? Or do you see their brains, their minds as somehow disordered, creating this chaotic environment? What we see here is that these people who when we see people who uh, who stack who, who stack up a mass of objects rather than collect objects and are invaded by the objects, it's the object that t takes pa power, takes hold over the collector, and not the contrary. And uh, so uh, it's a sort of an imprisoning of the collectors by these objects. And this, this is, I wanted to show it in a visual manner uh, via the solarization of the pictures that modify the sources of uh, light in uh, black or gray so there is no possible exteriority. 
It is a prison, and the use of the wide angle uh, uh, allows us to show at once the, the floor and all of the walls of this room, and it makes this uh, uh, image far more expressive. Uh, like a sort of a, a prison, uh, a cell. So when we arrive at the last slide, which is f uh, taken from the body of work that was actually entered in the pre, um, this is a, a body that you've described as still life. You've given it the title Still Life. And I think that's a really intriguing title because to me, there is such a wonderful tradition of classical still life that has a, a, a real anchor in utility and purpose and meaning for the user. This is something a little different, though, isn't it? Yes, because I really referred to the tradition of uh, painted still lives. Uh, through the uh, elaboration of the composition, we can bring these images into relationship with the painted still lives of the uh, 17th century. But the big difference with these still lives is that here the objects do not mean something that is obvious, which is uh, that of nature, by showing uh, wildlife, real fruit, real flowers, the evidence of death also with the presence of a skull. But what we're showing here is that all of these objects are made of plastic. So once again, they have entirely lost uh, the, their usage value, all of their truth. And therefore, uh, through an effect of bringing them together, there is a contrast with this reference to still life. And disorder takes hold, in particular through the profusion of objects which are excessive in number. Uh, what we can say also is that disorder comes also from this sort of exuberance of representation. A, a, a paroxysm of image because I used all possible means that we have today with digital tools. The colors are not the original colors of the photograph, so that is also a form of disorder. And so finally, these pictures show a new order of the world, which is an order that is in, entirely denatured. And the tool participates in this denatured uh, aspect, which is just an artifice, a representation. I think that's a wonderful place to leave our brief discussion tonight uh, with a world that is, at the same time, incredibly frustrating, but also completely full of visual possibility. Um, I know Sam is just about to come back up, but uh, I do want to thank you all very much for coming tonight. And please join me again for thanking Valerie Belin.